That semi-automatic junction that I showed off of my railroad network tour, can I make a tutorial for something like that? Yeah, I think so. So if you're a Lightmatica user, you can go ahead and download the schematics for both the semi-automatic junction and the rail alert system. The link will be down below. And you can go ahead and skip to this timestamp in the video here to see how to actually use these components. For everyone else, I've got a block-by-block -block style building tutorial here coming up right now. So the following materials are what's needed to build the semi-automatic junction. Uh, once you've gone ahead and gathered those, um, go ahead and find a junction that you want to actually install. Um, what you're going to do is basically locate the point where uh, two rails intersect here, or technically three. Um, find that location. Right where the, the actual junction rail is, is going to be the center of the hole you need to dig. Go ahead and dig a hole nine meters by nine meters um, in size. Dig that three deep. You can make it 11 by 11 and add some nice walls if you'd like. You can also go four deep and add a floor. Um, but either way, the void space underneath should look roughly like this with your ground level right here. Once you have that hole dug, what you're going to want to do is go straight in the center here. Again, this is where your junction is going to be. Um, down below um, is where we're going to start building. We're actually going to start below the junction and move one block back. So if you've got um, one track there, one track there, and one track there, you're going to be going in the direction that does not have a track above it. So you're going to start with uh, placing a block right here. You're going to then take four comparators. You're going to put one here, put in subtraction mode, one here, subtract, one here, subtract, one here, subtract. And then you're going to place redstone in between each of these repeaters, as well as redstone on the top. And then lastly, you're going to place a block here, block here, and a block here. From there, we're going to go ahead and place an upside down slab here, place some redstone on top of that and redstone on that. And if you want, you can cover this up with a slab if you like. And now this makes for the RS NOR latch that's going to hold the state of the junction. And this is the wire that's actually going to power the junction. Next, we're going to go to the three walls that have the rails above them, and we're going to build a very simple structure. We're just going to take five blocks. We're going to create a little horseshoe like this so that it's lined up with the track. Redstone torch in the center, and then I forgot to grab redstone. Um, redstone on the sides. We're going to build that there. We're going to build another one right here underneath this track, and then a third one right here um, underneath this track as well. Now, next to these three uh, horseshoe-shaped uh, constructions here, um, we're going to add two extra blocks, moving uh, one block up, basically, um, and place redstone on top of that. Do that again for the other two sides. And redstone on top. And then you're going to take just some regular old dirt, and you're going to place it on top of the redstone here. Um, on either side of the, the redstone torch. Um, and this should cut off that redstone signal. Now, the reason why we're placing the dirt here is because when we use a shovel to turn this uh, dirt block into a path block, um, you can see it no longer cuts off the redstone signal. And so it's that mechanism that we're going to use to actually activate this RS NOR latch um, and change the direction of the junction. And so at this point, you should now have something that looks like this. What we're going to do now is we're going to add the pistons that's going to destroy the dirt blocks so that uh, when you actually turn them into path blocks, they get reset and the, the signal gets cut off again. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to each of these four corners. We're going to add a repeater like so. Um, one right here facing that way on four ticks. And the same thing on this side, one here four ticks, um, and we're basically just going to mirror this on the other side. So another repeater right here, and another repeater right here, both of them set to four ticks. And now at this point, what we can do is we can start adding the pistons. What we're going to do is we're going to place a block here, redstone here, block up like this, and another one here, redstone, redstone, and then place two pistons facing uh, above the, the, the block here, so facing towards the rails. Um, and now what this is going to do is when we uh, turn this dirt block into a path block, that's going to send a redstone signal up to here. Four ticks later, it's going to move up to here, and then these pistons are going to extend, resetting the path block into dirt blocks, just like so. And we're then going to build the, the same construct on the other side here. So again, block here, redstone, two blocks up like this, redstone, redstone and then just regular pistons right here. 
Now, for these corners, the, the construction is going to be very similar, um, but we are going to add some extra pistons over here, and they are going to be controlled um, by these um, dirt blocks, and there's a, there's a very specific reason why that we will be getting into later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a, a block in the corner, redstone dust, then we're going to place block here, here, and here, and then place redstone dust on top of all of that, place two pistons here, and two pistons here. Now, when we activate this uh, input signal, or this input mechanism, we should see all four pistons extend. Just like that. We'll go ahead and do the same thing in this corner. Block here, redstone, block, block, block. Um, redstone, 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 and then four pistons, just like that. Now, it's at this point I would recommend adding torches in the corners um, of the pit here, and the reason why is because once we seal this up, this is going to get pretty dark. I um, mean, you don't want mobs spawning down here. That that's not going to be fun. So, just torches in the in the corners here. That should provide enough light level to keep anything from from spawning inside this uh, junction mechanism here. All right. So we've got the input mechanisms. We've got the RS nor latch. Now all we need to do is just connect them together. Um, and doing so is fairly simple. All we're going to do we're going to start um, here. If we look on uh, if uh, we have the T facing this way, uh, we're going to start in this corner. Um, we can just place redstone there and a torch there, and that will uh, activate that comparator and start the, well, start the RS process, but uh, we still need a few more <laughs> inputs before that's complete. So that's one. Um, we then go over to this comparator here. Again, this is this side of the of the T-junction. Place redstone dust here, block here, redstone dust here, so it connects with this. Um, and then a torch there that now connects to that input for the uh, RS nor latch. Um, we can then go over here, place a block here, redstone dust, and it's okay if these two are connected. Um, there's a very specific reason why these share inputs and reset signals, um, but that's something we'll get to later. Point is, for now, these are going to be connected, and that's totally fine. Redstone dust right here to go into the comparator, and a redstone torch right there. Lastly, with this one, we're going to place another block here, redstone dust right there. Again, we're going to be connecting these two together. Redstone dust there, and a torch connects it to the RS nor latch. We're nearly done now. All we need to do is just cover this up. Um, you are welcome to leave it open if you want, and if you want something even cooler, you could even just cover it up with glass. Um, but I personally like to just cover it up with uh, opaque blocks here. I think it just looks a little bit neater. Um, but that uh, design decision is entirely up to you. Uh, either way, if you are going to cover it up, what I would recommend doing is going to these corners right here, um, where the pistons kind of meet in the center. Um, and then just place an upside down slab um, in each of these corners, if I can actually aim correctly. Slab there, and slab there. And then I would also add a an upside down slab um, roughly around here. Um, and there is a very specific reason why, and that's because what I would recommend doing next is adding a trap door there, and a couple ladders. This allows you to just um, <clears throat> access the lower part if you need to, and this just gives you a little bit more uh, headspace just to get off the ladder. Once you've got those slabs or, or non-redstone breaking um, blocks in place, you can go ahead and fill the rest of this area with just normal blocks. Any block of your choice is fine, but just anywhere that there is air, just place a block like so. Once you've got that filled in with the block of your choice, go ahead and add back the rails here. Um, you're basically just going to connect the uh, three inputs that you've got there with just normal rails, um, like so. If you want to add power rails, remember there is a redstone torch directly below this block, so you can actually place power rails there, and extend them as far as you'd like, anywhere you'd like. You can do the same thing with all three sides here. Now, to use your junction, all you have to do is just have a shovel in hand and then just turn the dirt blocks into path blocks anytime you're on the approach. Um, it's going to be the left one to go straight or left, um, and the right one to go right or straight, depending on which orientation you're going with. So um, here, if we want to go left, we would um, hit the dirt block there. You can see the junction changes so that we veer off to the left. If we want to go straight, hit the dirt block to the right, and now the junction changes so we are allowed to go straight. Same thing on this one. If we want to go right, we hit that dirt block. If we want to go left, we hit that dirt block, and the junction updates accordingly. My recommendation is to go to each of the inputs here and then just double check to make sure that everything is working correctly. If I hit the block on the left, we should uh, be directed such that we would head straight. If we hit the block on the right, we should be directed to the right, just like so. Now, if you go through all three inputs and you check both directions from each input, 
um, and everything seems to be working fine, then you're all set. Your junction is ready to go. Um, all you have to do is, uh, like I said, whack the dirt as you're passing over it in a minecart. This will work up to the full eight meters per second um, in default vanilla. If you're using mods that speed up your, your minecart, you may need to slow it down. Um, but otherwise, if you're just going the bog standard eight meters per second, this junction will respond plenty quick. However, if your junction is working in reverse, meaning if you want to go to the left, you'll find that the junction uh, takes you to the right. If you want to go right, the junction takes you to the left. That's perfectly fine. There's an easy fix. Um, go down into the junction here using the trapdoor that we set up. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to remove this block and you're going to place it here. So remove it, place it. Um, and now what you end up doing is completely destroying your RS Norlatch. That's okay. Just break a redstone signal, place it back. And now you've inverted the signal here. So if I go back up, um, I then take my shovel and I test it again. We want to go left. The junction is now aligned left. We want to go right. The junction is now aligned right. Everything works as intended. All right, let's go over the theory of operation because uh, I like theory of operation. <laughs> All right, so the idea is fairly simple. Um, any sort of junction like this in Minecraft is basically going to um, operate in one of two ways. You're either going to connect these two tracks together, um, or you're going to connect these two tracks together. Um, so you've basically only got two states to deal with here. Um, so you could call this the zero state if we're connecting these two like this. Um, or you could call it the one state if we're connecting like this. And so what we need to do is we need to um, determine what state we want the junction to be in in order to take the the minecart from one track to another. And so if we go ahead and we uh, look at each track from each perspective, if I'm right here and I want to go straight, um, I need the track to be in the zero state because that will allow me to jump the junction and continue on straight without being diverted down this track. So we want it to be in the zero state if we're going straight. Um, and we want it to be in the one state if we're going to the left because the one state is going to connect these two tracks. That's going to bring us down here. So we want one right here. Likewise, over here, if we want to go to the left, we need to be in the zero state. If we want to go to the right, we need to be in the one state. That one's pretty obvious because it's just a direct connection we're dealing with at that point. Um, over here, uh, it's basically the same thing over here. So if we want to go straight, we want it to be in the one state so that these two tracks are connected. Um, so we would put a one there. Um, and if we want to go to the right, we would want it to be into uh, in the zero state, just like so. Now, the first thing I want to point out here is you'll notice that um, if we want to go to the left from here or from uh, to the right from here, uh, we set it to the 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 one state regardless. Um, so that's why these two are the the same input. So what we can actually do is we can actually just combine them um, into effectively one input. We'd have two different ways of actually accessing that input, um, but they are basically just one input. Likewise, with over here, we've got uh, we want to set the junction to the zero state um, regardless of which way we're going. So we can actually just tie those two inputs together. Um, and then if we actually look here. If we map out the different um, required inputs that we would need um, in the center here, you can see that we basically have what is effectively an RS Norlatch, um, but with four inputs, um, with these two inputs being the same and these two inputs being the same. And so one option, if we wanted to actually create a circuit that controlled this, is we could just use a normal two-input RS Norlatch, connect that to the junction, and then just wire it up in a fashion similar to this. That could, in fact, work. Um, the reason why I wouldn't want to go with something like this is because this is probably extremely bulky, more so than it needs to be. Um, you've got a couple crisscross wires here, which means you would probably need about four blocks of clearance in order to actually make that work. Um, you could probably make that smaller if you use some redstone trickery, but um, honestly, just working around this cross right here in such a small space, it's not particularly feasible. So we, are, we would need a, another solution. Now, if you look at a, a normal RS NOR latch, or at least one that we would construct in Minecraft, it's basically just two NOT gates uh, hooked up back to back like so. Um, and this is, I mean, this makes sense because if you stop thinking about it, if the input here is zero, um, the output is going to be one because it's going to be inverted. Um, that makes this input one, which makes this output zero. Um, so they basically um, stabilize each other. Um, whatever the input is uh, set to, it's going to be held by these uh, these inverters like so. 
This is probably the simplest way to make an RS NOR latch. It requires the fewest number of components. But interestingly enough, I mean, obviously, as long as you're inverting and uninverting, um, you can use as many inverters as you want. It just has to be an even number so that it cancels out. So really, if we really wanted to, we could actually create an RS NOR latch with four inverters arranged like so. And so if we actually take a look at how this circuit might behave, if we assume this input is a zero, this output's going to be a one, um, which means this input's going to be a one, which means this is going to be a zero. That's a zero, which makes that's a one. That's a one, which means that's a zero. Um, and so this, again, creates a, a sort of a bistable state here. Each of the inverters uh, helps the other inverters kind of maintain the state. But if you notice the, the state of the wires, they are um, mirrored. So these sets of wires right here are in the same state, as well as these sets of wires right here, they're also in the same state. What's more, this also, um, each one of these also acts as an input. Um, if I send a one into this wire here where it's a zero, that's gonna turn into a one, that's gonna turn into a zero, um, that's gonna turn into a one, that's going to turn into a zero, and then that's going to become a one again, which stabilizes the circuit here. Um, basically, if we set this input to one or this input to one, it changes the state. Likewise, if, if we're in this state, if we add a, uh, set a one to here or here, it's going to change the state once again to the previous state. And so what we've created, just if, uh, simply by creating a four not gate RS NOR latch instead of a two not gate RS NOR latch, um, is we've created an RS NOR latch with four inputs, and those inputs are alternating. So instead of just having um, an you know, two R inputs next to each other and two S inputs next to each other. We've got an S in this corner and an S in this corner, an R in this corner and an R in this corner. Uh, this circuit right here is absolutely perfect for this junction design. And so all we have to do then is we just take that RS NOR latch design, we integrate it with our junction here, and now we've got uh, the inputs um, lined up to where they need to go without any crisscrossing uh, wires. It makes for a very, very small solution. And uh, what's more, obviously, um, depending on the orientation of the junction, we may need to take a normal signal or an inverted signal. Both of those are available to us. We can either connect this side of, of the NOT gate to the junction, um, or we can connect this side to the junction. Um, doing one or the other will give us either the normal signal or the inverted. So, I mean, this, I think, is a really, really elegant solution that solves all the problems here. Here's a quick tutorial for the one-way track alert system. Here are all the materials you'll need. Start by creating a platform, uh, three by five here. Um, take a detector rail, powered rail and detector rail like so. Place redstone dust here, repeater here, another repeater here, set on three ticks. Comparator, set to subtraction mode, block here, block here, redstone dust here, redstone dust here, as well as a repeater on two ticks and a bell. This component will send out three chimes of the bell anytime a minecart passes over from the right to the left. But it will remain completely silent when passing from the left to the right. If you want to change the direction in which the alert system actually sends out an alert, all you need to do is mirror the circuit. 